concerns, and uh, it's the day that we should demand that the nation's largest corporations pay their fair share. We also should confront the myth that the country suffers from a deficit crisis uh, because there isn't one. As governors in some states and Republicans in Congress propose billions of dollars in additional tax cuts for the rich, we have to point out that our leaders have a choice. Some of those in Congress and the states say we're broke, but it's really a fairy tale. We're being robbed is what it is. They propose cutting trillions of dollars from seniors, and children, college students, and working families, and then they turn around and propose one and a half trillion dollars in tax breaks to the rich and big corporations. So this is not about a deficit crisis, it's all about our choices and our priorities. We do have a choice. We can support the Republican budget proposal in Congress, which would gut programs that help build a strong middle class, or we can support a budget that creates good jobs, invests in our future, and protects our families' financial security and shrinks the deficit. The choice we make depends and defines on who we are as a nation and where we stand as a nation. And today in targeting Bank of America is another uh, example of where we come across a corporate tax dodger when they say out there that there's a deficit. Uh, they say we have to cut jobs and services and put people at risk and, and further shrink the middle class. So let's declare today that we know, and we're not going to be fooled, there is no budget deficit. There's a revenue crisis. And when Congress and the governors say we're broke, they turn around and give those tax breaks to their uh, CEOs and campaign donors. So as we face a revenue crisis, and, and Corporate America and corporations like Bank of America deserve much of the blame. The tax loopholes and ballots and subsidies and offshore tax havens have allowed nearly two-thirds of U.S. corporations to avoid paying income tax. How many of us could get away with paying only two-thirds of what they tell us we owe, huh? So you look at um, Bank of America, and, and they're perhaps one of the worst of all the corporate tax evading companies. They're the largest bank, they're the fifth largest corporation, and they hold more than $2.2 trillion in assets. And I think you all know from reading the sign, how much did they pay in taxes? Zero. Zero. But in the past 10 years, they've spent $11 million on campaign contributions and $24 million on lobbying expenditures. And in return, the federal government gave Bank of America $2.3 billion when it made $4.4 billion in profits. Now, you're here because it doesn't make sense to you. And what we got to do next is confront them with what has happened and see if they can make sense of it or if they try to ignore us, be back in 30 days. And one of the things that uh, uh, the Bank of America folks have done specifically here in DeKalb County is foreclose on homes, try to take homes from people instead of trying to keep people in their homes. And we've got one of the worst records in the country uh, of percent of foreclosures right here in DeKalb County. It ain't right. They've got to be held accountable. And when they got bailed out, they didn't even think it was right to pass that on to ordinary folks. That's what they were supposed to do. That's what they were supposed to do, but and they wait. haven't been held accountable. Right. You are right. And if, if we can't shed light on it, then they're never going to be held accountable. So that's where, that's where it starts. And you look at all the, um, the people that, that did have job losses because of the economy, no fault of their own, um, those who had predatory loans given out that had high interest rates, no fault of their own, losing their homes and nobody was helping them.
it would make sense if I were in a bank or another corporation or a mortgage broker that I would try to keep people in a home and let them recover and still have their home. But to them it doesn't make sense, it's wrong, and if we don't do something about it, no matter how many of us there are, then they'll do it worse. Next time around, it, it'll, be, it'll be worse. So uh, let's all dedicate ourselves to keeping up with what's going on, keeping up with current events, knowing that there are remedies that, but Congress won't address them, so we have to get our Congress people uh, to get on board. And we also need to um, let them know that, you know, there are other banks, there are community banks, there are credit Regional unions. Banks. That's right. I moved my money. You moved your money, and, and, and didn't you feel good about yes, that? I did. Because you did make a statement to them. And one person and one person and one person keeps adding up, and that's where we, we all have to look at what we can do and, and, and try to make a difference. Because until uh, they concentrate on jobs, getting jobs for America, until they concentrate on the economic recovery, we're still going to see CEOs that make billions of dollars a year just in bonuses when they got handouts from the government from us. So, once again, let's, let's keep on top of things, be informed, talk to our friends, neighbors, and family, and, uh, and see if we can't put a stop to this. Our country depends on it. Thanks.